Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Disappearances video. I think this will be the last one, or maybe I'll do one more, and then I'll wrap up this series for this go-around, and then start focusing on another new series. But otherwise, it seems like it's very good. The reception has been very, very positive. Lots of great views, lots of great comments too. Definitely the best success yet when it comes to a new series. So I'm so glad to see that everybody is interested in this as much as I am. So this one has to do with something that I found at least online that's pertaining to yet another common theme in this case a disappearance there in Australia. I promise you I'm not picking these on purpose just for Australia. It's just pure happen chance that they happen to be all within the same location. But I picked this one because the way that these people disappeared it seems to be at least to me one of the most frightful things ever and when you read this information you'll realize why it is so so terrifying the notion the idea of being lost at sea and having no way to essentially get back to land that makes it so compelling so frightful and so much so in fact that there's it was even a movie that seem to be made of this experience and it has to do with this you're looking at the couple now it's known as the disappearance of Tom and Eileen Longergun so let's go ahead and let's talk about all the information associated with this disappearance. So who was, in this case, the married couple of Tom and Eileen Longergun? Well, they were a married couple that came from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. They were there in their location, uh, eventually where they got lost. I think it was because they were on vacation. But yes, they both came by the Baton Rouge, Louisiana area. He was born 1964, she was born 1969. They served, I guess, together even on a separate tour of duty um, in terms of in the Peace Corps. So those that are within that volunteer program, it's a great way to essentially travel the world, do some nice charitable work, and then gain some good experience too uh, with regards to their uh, careers. So in this case, there they were at least deciding to take a particular uh, tour that was going towards what's called the St. Crispin's Reef there in Australia by an area called the Great Barrier if you're looking at a picture of it now. Now, I, when I was looking at this information, I thought to myself, well, I mean, the size doesn't really seem too bad when it comes to where the location of the reef is compared to the Australian land. But keep in mind, though, that you're looking at that picture, you'll see the gauge in terms of distance. I mean, we're talking dozens of miles out there when it comes to these reefs so this couple whatever they were doing they were specifically scuba diving it seems like they the the tour that they were with picked this location because of its very very beautiful reef in fact you're looking at some of the pictures of the reef now i guess it's a, it's a thing where you go out there and then you can spend a couple of hours seeing this intricate beauty for yourself in person live essentially there at the bottom of the sea and then the whole idea is you go there as a group the captain takes you out there in a small boat and when that happens then you simply um, uh, stay there and then collectively come back but on January 25th 1998 unfortunately things did not work out for this couple because here's what occurred there they were on that date with this group there at St. Crispin's Reef there they were scuba diving uh, they were taking I guess a lot of a lot of photographs whatever was the case in terms of the reef and they decided I don't know if they decided to stay or wander a little bit out there like in this case uh, stray away from the group or if the group strayed away from them either way though they stayed where they were the group that they were with went another place either back to the boat or they were guided to a different location and then to the horror essentially the worst case scenario that you can think of the group eventually went back to the boat and then there the captain of the boat of this tourist group decided to go ahead and then return back to shore not realizing of course and not doing it on purpose no doubt that there was still two people missing from the group keep in mind that they were at least by my calculations around 30 to 50 miles or kilometers away from shore uh, they, they had to have gotten there by boat and they had to have taken a while to get there 
there. So now here, in the worst case scenario, was this tourist group now heading back to shore, but without this couple. So imagine their shock when this Tom and Eileen longer gun, whenever they arose up from the waters trying to find their group, it must have been just a nightmare situation. Like the first they would see just nothing, just nothing around them, just pure uh, sea level or sea water up until as far as the horizon uh, essentially considering how far they were from land they don't see their group they don't see their boat maybe they're thinking at that point that the that the that the people are just maybe a little bit further away and so they probably start moving towards a different location probably start giving it another half hour moving towards another location trying as much as they could trying to see if they could see any hint of the tourist group that they were with but no nope, they can't find anything nothing at all it's probably one of those things where those people go I guess through those five stages of grief uh, where where whenever it's, uh, there's an emergency situation like this you could totally imagine this 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 Tom and Eileen essentially going through those five stages but yes lo and behold they stayed in that area up until essentially they were found I mean not found at all but they were considered missing to this day where they went where their bodies were what happened to them it still remains as mysterious as possible because it took Took no less than two days afterward, on January 27th, that the that this couple was finally uh, found missing. Like in other words, finally somebody from the, either the tourist company or the group that was with that the tourist company realized, hey, wait a minute, where are these two people? And that's because whenever they were uh, leaving their boat, they found the bag containing the belongings of one of the couple, and so they realized, uh, oh my goodness, you know, we left these two people behind. And all of a sudden, there was this massive air and sea search that followed for not just one or two days, but the next three days. Know that they all went back to the same place there by St. Crispin's Reef to try to find this couple. But unfortunately, they were never, ever found. Where this couple went, what happened to them, uh, where their bodies are to this day, it is essentially still as mysterious uh, back then in 1998 as it is now nearly 20 20 years later but yes isn't that just horrifying imagine that imagine being in a situation like that you're coming up out of the water you're expecting to see the other folks there in your true group maybe even the boat somewhere around your area and you find nothing at all and then the shock that must have set in after about an hour or two of just hopelessly swimming around just trying to find something and, and of course they're having to swim because there they are in the ocean in the middle of the ocean like they can't do anything they can't stop swimming because if you do so then you would certainly plummet down under nothing to grab onto nothing to hold on to no as far as I could tell from what I was reading no life jackets nothing of the sort there they were just in their scuba gear and even then they probably would have had to have gotten rid of in this case those air tanks because those can get heavy no doubt after a while and getting exhausted after all the continuous paddling and swimming they would eventually have had to have uh, given up some of that stuff and then something at that point would have taken over either rest sleep whatever is the case and that's when their demise came about but yes there are several theories as to what happened to them uh, with regards to their bodies or to themselves the most common theory and I totally agree with this is that unfortunately they pretty much just would have drowned there would have just been so much hours spent trying to stay afloat that eventually their bodies would have been exhausted even if one person let's say maybe Tom took turns first and then Eileen afterward imagine if they would have uh, taken turns one person paddling while carrying the other and then the other person paddling eventually some would have to sleep for hours on end and when that happens then it just would have been a bigger burden also the coldness of the water you have to take that into effect too you can only be out there in the ocean water for so long especially at night imagine how cold it must have gotten there and there they were in their diving gear it would have the diving gear would have helped out somewhat when it comes to that type of temperature but not completely they needed to, they would have had to get out of the water for a good while 
but otherwise there they were stuck in that situation and then finally you know just fatigue would have set in and then one person would have drowned and then maybe the other one would have followed thereafter and as far as where their bodies went they're probably still there that's a massive massive reef covering a good set of miles so probably they're still down there just at the bottom of the ocean to this very day nothing ever really found in terms of their bodies the other notion is that they were actually succumbed to by sharks and I'll mention more on that in a minute with regards to the movie but yes the the other notion is that um, the sharks would have eventually found them having have been you know easy pickings considering their isolated stance and no defense that they could basically muster for these sharks it just would have been uh, 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 a horrible sight to see eventually with the sharks coming up towards them and them not being able to do anything but that's another way that the bodies were never discovered was because they would have essentially been eaten by these sharks now as far as why they would have disappeared there's the more common theory it was just pure accident uh, accidental stuff this captain he went by the name of Jack Nairn he was a skipper of of that tourist dive boat um, he was there uh, eventually questioned uh, investigated he was formally charged with their death in this case unlawful killing interestingly enough though he was found not guilty because it was just by pure accident that his company and, and, and the tour guides that were there I guess did not register that they were missing at the time so I think the, in this case the most simplest explanation is the most truest like uh, they were he heading back not realizing that these two people were left behind just pure accident but still uh, something involving the de obviously the death of them and that's I think that's what happened here this skipper this captain Jack Nairn just simply accidentally forgot to do so but it did lead to stiffer regulations there within the heavy tourist industry in Australia involving going out to the sea where now there are multiple checks that have to be done you would think it would have made sense before but no now in this case there have to be these things done there are multiple checks in place that force both the captain and then several crew members to each independently confirm that they have the proper head count among all the tourists so at least this tragic accident uh, definitely changed things afterward for the better within that industry industry his company by the way ended up uh, just essentially going out of business obviously like no doubt because when you have something like this happen it, nobody else ever gonna use the services of that company ever again and then the other theory interestingly enough seems to be that the pair committed suicide or was a combination of murder suicide this one though is not really I guess played upon too much because it doesn't make too much sense. The closest link seems to be that this guy Tom Lonergan seemed to have a diary and within it there was one entry that he was looking for a quote unquote quick and peaceful death but people that knew him knew that he wasn't really that kind of disturbed like he was just someone that I guess was just venting and so he, him I guess and eventually either A committing suicide or killing Eileen out there and then he himself committing suicide or or both of them doing so just didn't make too much sense to the people that knew uh, the, that the, this couple and so that's why to this day it doesn't really seem to be validated also there was the idea that they uh, did so so that they could collect on their own insurance policies but that was quickly thrown out because their insurance policies the ones that they had on each other were never really claimed like nobody claimed them nobody got the money essentially so that nobody even claimed the bank accounts that they both had after one person passed away so nothing really went forward with that too uh, and then also uh, you know the idea about the sharks uh, what happened there that's also another theory but yes I think that's what happened here is just plain simple human error in the worst way possible having to do with the captain and the crew members accidentally leaving them behind but yes their story was so compelling it was made into this movie you're looking at the poster of it now it's called open water it came out in 2003 
the names were changed, the location was changed, but in all essence, it's essentially their story. It's about a couple who's lost out at sea whenever uh, they decide to go scuba diving, and then it's about their experience out there in this open water. This movie actually made some pretty good money, considering it was made for a shoestring budget, really tiny, like $120,000. It's essentially like a found footage film, uh, the kind of stuff that's made with cheap cameras, makes it more realistic. Um, it makes it more intense, uh, the, uh, and it's supposed to be really, really good. It does make me interested in seeing it afterward, but it expounds on that idea that I was mentioning earlier, that once they were lost, they, they became uh, they succumbed to the sharks, and that's supposed to be another really harrowing set of scenes within the film, because they used real sharks in the film, too, and they made the sharks act more naturally, not like Jaws, but more like sharks on the hunt, like the, how they would essentially act out there so it, it does make me interested in seeing it if anyone has seen it let me know if it's like a good film post it in the comments below but yes this film is essentially dedicated to their story but that's about it that's pretty much all the information associated with the disappearance of this couple Tom and Eileen Longergun crazy just crazy way for them to have gone worst way possible other than being buried alive to me being out lost at sea with no hope at all of ever being found and then realizing that eventually you're just going to succumb to fatigue being out there at the sea uh, and then drown afterward it's, it's an insane way of going so uh, in terms of what happened to them uh, still their bodies are missing but if anyone has any more info anything else I might have missed uh, other information about them that stands out please post those comments below that'd be great to hear all right everybody thanks again as always take care